Hey guys, it's Alex Haney here again, and today is Tuesday, which means it's time for more Queer Outdoor Ed with me. This week I'm going to be talking about base layers for the outdoors. Last week I talked about different types of insulation to use in the backcountry and some of the pros and cons of that, and you guys seem to really like that, and I got a request to do this video, so I'm going to do that. And you might be wondering, like, why do we have to wear special stuff outdoors? Why can't I just wear whatever I usually wear in the city? And the reason being that the stuff that we wear in the city is not going to protect us very well from the elements and keep us comfortable in the outdoors, which is really important for your comfort and your safety out there. So base layers. Base layers are basically whatever you're wearing next to your skin when you go outdoors. I remember when I was back in high school, they recommended silk or polypropylene for our base layers. But these days, the three main contenders are uh, nylon, polyester, and merino wool. So the first option we'll talk about is nylon. These are some nylon pants that you might have seen me wear in some of my videos. And I, you, you probably have also seen me wearing this uh, button-up cream-colored shirt. When I think of nylon, I think of it as my real, like, outdoors workhorse. Definitely the toughest stuff that you can choose, but also the least comfortable all around. So. I choose nylon mostly when I need a lot of protection and so I'm talking about things like when there's a lot of bugs or when I know I'm going to be going through some dense bush or bushwhacking, stuff like that. And the denser the weave, the more protection it's going to give you. A really densely woven nylon, bugs won't be able to bite through that. It'll be super durable so it'll last a long time and it'll protect you from brush scraping against you and all that stuff without shredding to pieces. It also offers the most sun protection of all the different options. It's also more wind resistant, so if it's going to be real windy, then it's a good choice. So all around, I just think of this as like backcountry armor. If you have some tough conditions to face, then nylon is your best bet. The only thing is that it comes with some pretty huge downsides. Because of the fact that it's, it's tightly woven and it's so tough, it uh, doesn't breathe very well at all. It's also I find it just the least comfortable to wear. It's tough material, you know, it's it's not soft against your skin or anything like that. It doesn't handle moisture very well, so it doesn't really wick sweat away. Like, it'll dry really quick, but compared to the other two options, it's, it's not great. And nylon doesn't have any natural stretch to it, so that's another big thing because if it doesn't fit perfectly well, then you might need to wear a belt or something with it or have one of these type pants that have the stretchy waist. Because of the lack of stretch, you know, it restricts your mo mobility a bit. You might have seen me wearing these pants in a bunch of my videos. These are a nylon pant with actually some cotton added into them to add some breathability. That's something you'll notice with outdoor gear too. It's not always, you know, 100% nylon, 100% merino wool. They kind of blend these different options sometimes to give bring some of the benefits of other materials in. So when you have like a blend of different fabrics, you just have to know sort of the properties of both those different fabrics and, and say, okay, well, I'm going to get some of the benefit of merino and some of the benefit of polyester. Another common material that you'll see added to outdoor stuff is just a bit of spandex. And basically they add that in to increase the stretch of the fabric so it's just more comfortable, you have better range of motion, but it adds some cons to it as well, like it's heavier and it doesn't handle moisture as well. So the next um, contender in our list for base layers is polyester, and the tricky thing about polyester is that um, because it's the most popular base layer, different companies have kind of branded it different ways. So for example, this is Patagonia's Capoline, and they all say, share the, you know, the the same properties of polyester but they do vary slightly in their performance just because of the the weave of the fabric and the construction of the garment and all that the greatest thing about polyester is that it's super cheap it's probably the cheapest out of all of these if you did watch my video about different installation types for the backcountry it shares a lot of the same properties with fleece because they're essentially made out of the same thing so they're both really cheap which is awesome they're both super super easy to find at thrift stores. They're easy to find for super cheap at any outdoors kind of store at all. They don't absorb water and they dry really really quick. They're really good at wicking moisture away from your body but at the same time I don't find it as comfortable as merino wool because of the, the way that it handles moisture. It, it doesn't soak it up 
and take it away from your body so it can feel a little bit clammy sometimes. It's definitely, definitely more breathable and handles moisture way better than nylon though. So if you don't need the bug protection, this is a better way to go and a lot cheaper than merino. It's also just way more comfortable next to your skin. It feels a lot more like, you know, a, the comfortable type of material that you're used to wearing. It's a lot better than the nylon, which feels a lot rougher. Another downside to polyester though is that it definitely does stink. Like if you start stinking, then your polyester stuff is going to start stinking. Here is um, a pair of polyester pants that I wear in the backcountry. These are great to wear as pants when you know you're not going through any thick brush either. If you did try to go through anything like that with these pants on, they'd probably get shredded apart. Another great thing about polyester is that it can come in super lightweight fabrics. So if you're doing trips where it's really, really hot or you're really physically exerting yourself, it's really comfortable because you won't have a really heavy weight material next to your skin. Okay, so the last material I'm going to talk about is merino wool, which I'm actually wearing right now. This is my merino wool base layer. It's a mid-weight layer meant for cold weather. So out of all these different materials, I have probably the least experience with merino because of the fact that of all these, it's definitely by far the most expensive. And you guys know, like I try to find as much of my outdoor stuff at thrift stores as possible and I've never ever been able to find a merino wool base layer at a thrift store. The best I've been able to do is find like a merino polyester blend, which is what my um, long underwear for cold weather outdoor stuff are, are. But with all the reading I've done about base layers and based on other people's experiences, I think that it's safe to say that where merino wool really shines is for cold weather stuff, which is why I invested the money into this mid-weight merino base layer for, you know, late fall and winter camping. If you don't have any experience with merino wool, it's really, it's not itchy like you'd think wool would be. It's a really super, super fine type of wool that it feels a lot, like it feels really similar to cotton or just the stuff that you would wear every day, but a lot nicer, a lot more luxurious. If I could afford it, I would just, I would wear merino wool all the time probably, except maybe in super hot weather. One of the main advantages over merino versus polyester for, you know, trips where there's not going to be a lot of bugs or things like that uh, is that it's antimicrobial and it's naturally odor resistant, so you can just stink and this shirt will not start sinking as well so you could wear it for weeks and it'd be totally fine. In my last week's video about the different insulation types we talked about wool and some of the properties when it gets wet and that's really similar to for base layers. It handles moisture the same way in that it, it does like soak up moisture but the really neat thing about merino wool is that even though it soaks up moisture there's something called the cuticle which is the outer sheath of the wool which somehow I don't know how it works but I guess it's like an adaptation of the sheep that uh, it will get wet but the out outer part of it won't feel wet so you can get soaking wet but all the moisture will be in the fibers and not sitting next to your skin. So that's really really nice compared to polyester which kind of repels moisture away so you know if you're soaking wet it's gonna it's not going to soak in, it's going to stay next to your skin. So you might think because of what I said about wool versus fleece in my previous video that the polyester would perform similarly to the fleece and be a safer bet if it was going to be really wet. But if it's going to be really wet and cold then wool is definitely a safer choice. But just because of the way that wool handles that moisture, it's not going to be sitting next to your skin, it's just going to soak up into your garment and keep you really, really nice and um, warm even when it's soaking wet. So some of the cons of merino wool, as I've mentioned, one of them is that it's really pricey. The other thing is that it's, if you have to choose between polyester and merino wool, merino is definitely a lot warmer. But at the same time, it does have a very like wide temperature range where it kind of regulates your body heat. It just it can't be woven into the sort of lightweight fabrics that um, polyester can. So the other thing as compared to polyester is that it it is uh, less durable so it will get holes in high use areas a lot faster. I gotta say though I really really love the merino. I wish I could wear it all year round but there are things like bugs and heat and all that stuff that I gotta worry about too. 
Also, you know, what can you afford? If I could only afford one thing, I'd probably go with nylon because it has the best protection and it's the most durable. So specifically for pants, usually you're going to be just choosing between the polyester or the nylon for three season stuff. You're not really going to get into the merino unless it's getting cold outside and you have to wear something like a long underwear or something like that. So these will go under a more heavy duty or insulating layer when you're doing colder weather camping. So that's when you kind of get the choice between uh, these are made out of either polyester or merino or a blend of those two things. So based on all this info, I'd love to know what you guys are gonna choose for your next trip. Leave a comment down below and I hope you guys have fun out there. See ya.